Joining us today on the Yellow Smart Report and Money Talk Radio is Robert Rolfing, CEO of Desert Mountain Energy, trading on the TSX Venture Exchange as DME, and in the U.S. on the OTC as DMEHF. The company has established itself as a pioneer in helium and natural gas exploration, with its flagship focus now on New Mexico projects near Roswell, where Desert Mountain Energy is advancing production, AI-driven extraction technology, and long-term supply agreements. Robert, welcome back to the program. Great to visit with you again. Hey, thank you. I appreciate that. We spent a lot of time together the last few weeks. We went to New Mexico. We're on KKOB News Talk Radio there, explaining to the entire state the connection between Desert Mountain Energy and the AI Data Center in Roswell. And you've been very successful with that relationship, haven't we? We have managed to move things forward real well. It's exceedingly moving along. After being asked to come in and join their advisory board, we managed to move the ball down the field fairly fast. Now, I understand that there may be only about 12 viable AI data centers in the country. Explain the unique relationship between the natural gas in the Roswell area, your land package with the wells that you have, and the proximity to the Roswell data center. It's very close. Basically, our further south well is about three and a half miles away from the data center. As far as the crow flies in a straight line, it's real close. Where we actually have to do the connection for not only ours, but some other people's local gas, it will be about 14 and a half miles of pipeline that we have to lay for them. You recently just announced a non-dilutive $3.2 million funding agreement with the Roswell Information Park. That is correct. And what that includes is the cost of laying an 8-inch pipeline approximately 14 and a half miles. And that's to set up just the local gas, ours and some other folks, to get that gas directly to the data center. It also includes the engineering for the engineering work. We've done a lot of the base geology and engineering work within our group for the natural gas storage unit. We found that within a 40-mile radius of the AI data center, we actually have the thickest salt at a sufficient depth that we can create a salt cavern to store up to 3 billion cubic feet of gas. That certainly is a great deal of gas. Now, it's a misnomer that in many circles, natural gas is considered a pollutant. It's not, especially in this case. And you have formed, again, a stronger relationship with the Roswell data data center to support carbon capture in the implementation and development of carbon capture solutions connected to power generation for the center. And this is a strategy to integrate sustainable practices into the energy operations over there while supporting the advanced technology infrastructure. That's correct. The folks that are looking at coming in on the company, it's down to a couple different companies. And one of them would prefer to have total carbon capture. Now, to do that and accomplish that just for the data center during the build-out will be approximately a billion dollars. It's $940 million. And so there's pipeline, CO2 pipelines within reasonable distance within about 20 miles. That does have some capacity to it. And that's one of the areas that we're looking to do that tie-in with that specific pipeline. Now, since we began covering the story again in mid-September, the stock has doubled. You've gone from 17 cents to about 35 cents today in Canada and from about 12 and a half cents in the U.S. to 25 cents today. That's a double. It's nice to finally get back going in the correct direction again. Speaking of the correct direction, we covered the company about five years ago. During that time period, the stock hit a high of somewhere close to $5, somewhere in the mid-four price range. And then because of the kind folks in Flagstaff, and that's tongue-in-cheek, that statement, they created some legal controversy, which really helped tank the stock and the operations in the whole brick area during that time period. And that was just recently resolved as of September 10th. Would you care to elaborate for the purpose of educating our current shareholders and those who are considering investing in your company at this unbelievably low price? The way it works on that, 
They had appealed it to the state Supreme Court, and ultimately the state Supreme Court upheld our position, just like the appellate court did. So the Supreme Court, after they make their decision that they put out, then they send it back in a formal written remand to the appellate court. Then the appellate court sends it back to the Coconino County Court, which is where Flagstaff is located. In that time frame, it takes time. These type of things, they're not happening overnight. So you have the Supreme Court go to send it back. That probably takes, in reality, two to three weeks. Then it can very easily take up to six weeks to go back to the Superior Court in Coconino County. And then that judge has to review what he or she has been instructed to do by the appeals court. Now, when the appeals court made the ruling, it was a judgment against the city, and it was found in our favor. It's a hurry-up-and-wait situation. But once again, we're glad that it came out. We prevailed like we thought we would. Which means you have a large helium field in the Holbrook area that you can now exploit cleanly, efficiently, and service the entire area in Arizona and beyond that needs that valuable gas. The city of Flagstaff issue was with one specific well up by Meteor Crater. We have other things, and we're working with the Arizona State Department of Environmental Quality on some other aspects to really be able to expand our production and what we need to really do to bring it online. And those things we have worked closely with DEQ to rectify. Shooting back to Roswell, let's discuss helium-3 and helium-4 and how valuable that is, who your offtake partner is going to be, and why is it so crucial? A lot of people would like to find helium-3, and then the way you very selectively separate helium-3 and helium-4 There's no current outside plants in the U.S. to do it. And also, by congressional edict, only the United States government has the right to market it and to take care of that. It's currently handled in one place in the United States at the Savannah River Plutonium Processing Facility in Georgia. There's one small reactor series in the Tennessee Valley Authority. And then in Canada, there's one nuclear uh, facility that can generate it. And then you have the Russians. That's it. That's where the entire world supply of helium-3 comes from. It's for a one liter flask of it. It varies, but it's anywhere from 2,750 to this week on Monday, it was 3420 was the price that they put on it. It's $96,000 a kilogram. It's very expensive, very rare. You have China, Russia, and the U.S., and India now, looking to go to the moon to harvest and to process out from the lunar soil, the regolith, helium-3, and then send it back. Now, to give you an idea, how much does that weigh? A lot of people, what is it? What is a liter of this? Okay, you've said that it's expensive. To give you an idea, a one liter bottle of helium-4 at 99.9995% purity has contained within it approximately 28.7 grams of helium-4. I bought the same one liter bottle of helium-3 contained 0.8. 1587 grams. It's fractions of it. Yes, it's helium, but it's the stable hydrogen isotope of helium. So it has a lot of unique properties and how it gets put out there for use. Most folks are familiar with the backscatter machines at an airport where they've had to stand and raise their hand and it takes a quick look at you. The largest use of it is for at the borders, for border securities in all countries, so that you can look at containers coming through the port facilities or on trucks, and you can see what's on the inside, and you can look for basically plutonium or anyone trying to make a dirty bomb. Robert, what are the next steps for the company during the next six months? What can we look forward to as shareholders and potential shareholders? 
the real key critical points that we're looking at is we will be laying pipeline. We'll be doing more engineering work on the gas field and looking at where to drill those 13 wells and the permitting for that for the gas storage unit and increasing the production overall. Allison, there's one other little tidbit here, so I just want to bring it up to your folks. We were asked to be a member of the Joint Directed Energy Consortium, JDEC, and we were notified that we are accepted. The Joint Directed Energy Consortium is a Department of War initiative led by the Joint Directed Energy Transition Office. It functions as a public-private partnership to bring together government, industry, and non-traditional defense contractors. It leverages contracting methods to speed up innovations to address technology gaps in connection with directed energy capabilities, basically counter current and future threats. It includes entities in New Mexico like Sandia and Los Alamos National Labs and White Sands Missile Range. It covers a lot of aspects, high energy lasers, high powered microwaves, platform integration, power and thermal management, advanced materials and material sciences, energy storage, sophisticated cooling systems, advanced power generation, optical and photonic technologies, and adaptive optics. Robert, that's a pretty serious mandate and direct connection to the Department of War, the Department of Energy. Congratulations to you. That is wonderful news. Thank you. It's one of these things that we are quietly working on a number of fronts, and there's a lot of things coming together in New Mexico. Do you sleep, sir? I do, and I'm not as much as I used to. Thanks again for joining us today in the program. Thank you, Alice. Have a great day. I've been speaking with Robert Rolfing, CEO of Desert Mountain Energy Corporation, trading on the TSX Venture Exchange as DME and the U.S. on the OTC as DMEHF, with helium and natural gas projects in New Mexico, including off-take agreements tied to Roswell's growing AI data campus, Desert Mountain Energy is positioning itself as a long-term supplier of critical energy and industrial gases. Go to the company's website, desertmountainenergy.com. This is the Ellis Martin Report and Money Talk Radio. Desert Mountain Energy is a paid sponsor of the Ellis Martin Report.